It's already week four of the NFL season. We are once again joined by A to Z Sports Lines beat writer Mike Payton. Mike, the season has flown by so far already. The third home game for the Lions. Monday night football, so they get an extra day coming off the Cardinals win. But first, let's talk about what we saw from the team out in Arizona. Maybe not the offensive firepower that you expected coming off the, the loss to the Buccaneers the week before, but they did what they needed to do to get the job done. The defense looked pretty good, and the Lions are coming home 2-1. and one. Yeah, offensively, I thought they looked a lot better, obviously, mm -hmm. than they did the week before. Uh, didn't have as many red zone trips, but when they did get down there, they actually scored this time. Much better than one for seven. Two well, for yeah, two, we'll yeah, take that. Yep, absolutely. Two for two is good. Uh, would have liked to have seen a little bit more in the pass game in the second half because uh, Jared Goff was on fire in that first half. He went uh, 12 for 12 and uh, threw for two touchdowns. It looked really good. Uh, they sort of figured him out after that, but the run game was unbelievable. 186 yards between both Gibbs and Montgomery. They keep running the ball like that. There isn't a team out there that can stop them. And then defensively, I think that's probably the best defensive performance this team has had quite a while. So let's start with Goff. Like you said, looked really good in the first half. Things teetered off a little bit in the second half. Just how can you assess his first three games so far? It's been a little bit inconsistent between, you know, the, the win against the Rams, the loss against the Bucks, and then the win last week. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the first two games there was a lot of impatience there, and I think that he was trying to kind of – uh, work things in a little bit more, you know, trying to go to Jameer Gibbs too much, trying to go to Jamison Williams too much. And then in that second game, I mean, 19 or 18 targets to Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, he was pretty uh, predictable there for a minute. But I think in this third game, he's he settled down a little bit more. He was finding his, his targets. He's finding uh, better situations. He was dead on, like I said, 12 for 12, first half. The interception, you know, it's it, that's a I can't fault him too much for that. That guy jumped the route really, really well. Uh, other than that, I, I think he's played a lot better. And if he continues to get better and 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 trust his O line and trust these receivers that he has, then uh, I think he's going to snap back to the guy that we're used to seeing. So we're going to jump around a little bit here because there's a lot to talk about. But working with the offense headed into Monday night's game, he's going to have a new center. Frank Ragnow not going to play this Monday against the Seahawks. How does that affect the offensive production? And how does that affect just the production of the offensive line? They've been so good. Like you said, the running backs have been great and yeah. a product of that offensive line. Yeah, well, you know, their, their offensive line is the best in the NFL. But every offensive line has a, a glue that holds it all together. And Frank Ragnow is that glue. So missing him is going to be a, a, a problem. The, they missed him a few times for last year, and there was a noticeable difference in what they were able to achieve on the run game and also blocking for golf. So you have to factor in that there's a chance that he could be sacked a little bit more in this, uh, in this game coming up. And then obviously, you know, he, he might not be able to run the ball as well as, as, uh, as Montgomery and Gibbs have in the past few games. But... With uh, Graham Glasgow expected to slip over to that center, you at least have a guy who has some experience there. Uh, what they decide to do at left guard is going to be a whole other situation. But I think, you know, this is a much more established offensive line with Zeitler joining and Sewell's healthy and Decker's there. I think they'll be a lot better off than they were last year when they had to try things with the rookie and Colby Sorsdal and uh, Coyote Awasika. And I think they'll just, it should be a lot better this time. And then over on the defensive side of things, you said that it was one of, if not the best performance so far yeah. in three weeks. What specifically did you like from the defense that maybe you hadn't seen in the first two weeks? Well, I think the big thing is, and, and we've seen this over the course of uh, the years with Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn, they've had a hard time stopping mobile quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. They were able to keep uh, Kyler Murray to just 53 yards outside of a, he had a big 20 yard run in the, like the first drive. After that, he was shut down all day couldn't run the ball every time he got out they were had a man there they had a spy for him they were trying to make sure that he couldn't extend plays they did that really well and that's something you know as i mentioned they had a big problem with that's you know, while i don't think justin fields is that great of a quarterback mm -hmm. he's really good at extending plays right. and that's why they were able to do that so much against the lions and they finally fixed that issue and that was huge for them and i just think their play of their secondary uh you know i did a film study on uh, kirby joseph earlier today absolutely blown away with the anticipation and the awareness that he's showing on the field right now. He's having a Pro Bowl level season. Yeah, Kirby's gotten off to a great start. Someone who maybe has been a bit inconsistent, who you also did a film study on this week, Terrion Arnold, yes. maybe ruffled some feathers a little bit. Yeah, but, upset some people there. But justified, what have you seen from him? Because there has been good yeah. and there's also been bad. Well, you know, I think that most people uh, kind of misunderstood what I was saying there. And the, the whole plan was 
just to back him down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Don't take him out of the game altogether. Just back him down a few snaps and let him get used to the technique because the problem that he's having is with these DPIs, these defensive pass interferences. He's had four. That's the most in the NFL. It's in three games. He's already got – he has another uh, face mask penalty. Mm-hmm. He's got the most flags of any defensive player in the league right now uh, in just three games. You know, that's a, that's a problem. And he's already been fined as well. And, and you know, I don't want to see this kid – continue to right. do these things because they they, they they break the backs of the, of the Lions defense. You know, they the opponent has scored on four of five of those uh, penalties. So what I was suggesting was just backing them down a little bit and maybe try Kendall Vildor and have them kind of split the the snaps. And, but other than that, you know, I did a film study on Tarion. I really liked what I saw uh, earlier on in the game. I think he had some really good stops against Marvin Harrison Jr. I think he handled him really well. Uh, especially there was a one shot in the end zone. He was, he was able to break that up. Um, but you just got to get used to those little things, you know, uh, change of direction, and you got to get over those DPIs. You got to get that stopped. And that really was a great piece. Check that out if you want more on Terry on Arnold on, on A to Z Sports. And one of the things it had me thinking about was, right, you have a Lions team that is Super Bowl or bust, and then you have a rookie player. So how do you balance – that you know he's going to get better with experience but also you know you don't really want him taking his his licks because this is a team that's that's here to win ball games right. on Sundays. Yeah, it's it's a hard thing to do, you know, but it, when you're this early into the season, this is where you want to make your mistakes. This is where you want to try things. Uh, you'd rather have this fixed now than you would in in November, December, January especially. So if you're going to try anything, if you're going to back him down at any point to kind of work on technique and work on uh, you know just getting rid of these these penalties, this would be the time to do it. Um, and I know I upset some people, but I was simply just saying, like, like back them down a couple mm-hmm. of games and then get them back in there. Um, but yeah, you know, people like headlines, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like the articles. So Monday Night Football, you have Dan Campbell's kryptonite coming back to town. Seahawks, yep. who are 3-0 and against Campbell so far during his tenure. A Seahawks team that I'm not sure entirely what to make. They're 3-0, and they're off to a great start, but they've beaten the Broncos, the Patriots, and a Skylar Thompson-led Dolphins team. Yes. So at 3-0, and what have you seen from the Seahawks team? Are they for real, and how do they match up against the Lions? Well, Geno Smith, you know, he doesn't get looked at as, you know, like a Patrick Mahomes does or Lamar Jackson, some of the best quarterbacks in the league, but he is just deadly accurate, and and he just, he will dink and dunk you down the field. He'll he, I think he has about 72% completion percentage at this point. And that's all from just kind of dinking and dunking. And then when yeah. they do that, they, they'll open up these big plays, these like big explosive plays that they're able to do as well. And I think if they get Kenneth Walker back, that's going to balance their offense even more. Uh, the one thing I think that gives the Lions really kind of an advantage is that they, the Seahawks haven't been that great on third down offensively. And the Lions have only allowed eight third down conversions this year. So that's, mm-hmm. that's huge. That's going to be a big, big thing for the Lions. Get them to third down, get the stop. You're going to win this game. So headed into this one, the Lions are facing some injury trouble. We talked about Rag now, obviously Davenport out for the season. Laporta questionable coming into Sunday. What have you you seen about the injury report, and how does that affect the game plan headed into Sunday? So good news there is there, uh, Lee McNeil is back at practice today. Uh, Sam Laporta is back sort of. He's working on the side with a trainer. That's usually a good sign that a guy will be coming back. Brian Branch, who kind of went out late during the game last week, he practiced as well. Uh, Terry and Arnold practice. Ennis Rakestraw, who missed last week due to an injury, he is back as well. So there's some there's some good news there. Guys are getting guys back. Uh, they're going to have to try to find a way to offset the loss of Derek Barnes, who's going to be out for the next four weeks, and then Marcus Davenport, who's out for the year. Should be interesting to see what they do there. I think you'll see more Josh Paschal. Maybe even they'll make uh, James Houston active and and see what he can do there as well so there's there's some things that are going to be needing to some questions that are going to need answers and i think we're going to do it. and what's what's the key for that lions defense to not only have a, a next man up mentality but to stop those 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 doink passes that yeah. geno smith can make down the field because they haven't been able to do it in in the last three meetings yeah they're going to just have to try to keep everything in front of them and and really they're going to have to you know man to man they're going to have to stay on their guys and and try not to get beat. I know that's hard to do with DK Metcalf because he's he's such a monster and, and, and athletically he can just do about anything. Take from what Kirby Joseph has been showing, the awareness and the, uh, you know, just being ready for everything. And I think that that'll certainly help. 
off the field, halftime Monday night, Calvin Johnson's going to be inducted into the into the Lions Ring of Honor. Such a such a special moment for a special player. Just yeah. what does he mean to this organization for everything that he did on the field? But also, he's long retired and he still very much is a part of not only the Lions but but Detroit as a city. You know, it's funny. Uh, my uh, we're packing to move, as you know, and my wife was kind of packing up her old Lions jerseys the other day, and she was wondering, can I wear any of these anymore? And she's like, I have this Calvin Johnson one. I said, you can definitely wear that one. It's because he's a legend. And and when you have guys like that, like Barry Sanders as well, I mean, these are the guys that you just cherish forever, and they're always going to be part of this Lions organization. And, and any time you go to a game or anything, you're going to see a Calvin jersey or a Barry jersey. And, and you know, I just, is for me, I think Calvin should have a statue out right next to Barry Sanders. I, it's one of the most unbelievable players I've ever watched and had the pleasure to cover. And then you mentioned jerseys. The most important question I'm going to ask right now, what do you think of the black jerseys? Lions going to debut their new <laughs> alternates on, on Monday night. Well, I fought people all summer long because I love them. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've always loved them. I love the ones in, in the late 2000s and... And I think the big thing that for everybody was, well, that just reminds them of the own 16 team. Well, the good news is that none of those players are going to be wearing <laughs> these jerseys on Monday night. So I, I'm a big fan of the black jerseys. Love them. All right. So Monday night football, Lions, Seahawks, Seahawks undefeated. Will the Lions hand the Seahawks their first loss of the season? How do you see this one going down? And what, what do you think the final score is going to be? I think the Lions are going to take this one out, but I do not think it's going to be easy. I think they're going to win 38-35, and it's going to be a shootout. All right, Lions looking to start the season 3-1, and one, get back at home before they hit the road for a little bit. Mike Payton of A to Z Sports, that's where you can check out all that stuff. The Kirby Joseph, Terrion Arnold, and a whole lot more, and we will catch up with him next week before the Lions are on their bye.